all, I'd like for everyone that's part of TROP3 to please stand and be recognized. Okay. One of the objectives of the TROP class is a legacy project, and each class kind of gets together, brainstorms on different items that they think would be a good project. And our class came up with two, one of which is the Go Green project, the other is the 2008 election. So we tried to figure out what would be the best way to implement a Go Green project and for it to affect as many people as possible, and we decided that it would be a great idea to start at CCAR. They don't recycle. So thus, the big trash cans. So our idea and our goal was to start with CCAR and then have the program trickle down to anyone that's affiliated with CCAR, affiliates, realtors, whatever your affiliation with CCAR, that you could implement a program at your individual offices if you don't have one. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have Bob McCraney, who is a... Broker associate with William Davis Realty. He is a member of the Texas Realtor Leadership Program Class 3. He is a GRI and CRS, and he's lived in Carrollton since 1988 and has been an agent since 2003. Bob is like the go green expert, and he's here to kind of give us a little um, information on how we can implement this. There's also some information on your tables um, that you can kind of look at and try to implement. Also, there's sign-up sheets that our committee will help you implement the programs in your offices if you so desire. Please welcome Bob McCrane. Thank you. How are y'all doing this morning? Great. Great. How are y'all doing this morning? Great. Okay, great. Um, yeah, one of our legacy projects was the Go Green project, and um, I just started talking to people in the group and just kept talking and talking and talking, and after about 45 minutes, they're like, I think you should do the presentation. So that's why I got to stand here today. We wanted to give you all solutions that were real and practical today, not things that you have to wait years for it to come, and things that will save you money in your business, okay? I live and breathe this every day. I can show you real real stats, and, and this is what the presentation is about today. It's, it's about your business practice, and it's about things you can do personally. It's also things that you can sell to your clients and say, hey, I know this about this new home that you're buying. I know it's an older home. It's not built to be green, but here's how you can do things to improve it. This is my house. It was built in 83. I live in Carrollton. Oh, sorry, I forgot to turn the mic on. <laughs> Now, can you hear me better? Is that any better? How's that? Okay, sorry about that. This is my house. It was built in 83. It was not built to be green. The first year we lived there, we used 35,000 kilowatt hours in a year of electricity. Over the last five years, we've brought that down to 32,000. Um, so we've reduced our electrical use every, you know, over the years by 2,500 2, kilowatt hours, which is about $375. So we've basically taken one electric bill out of our cycle per year by reducing what we're using. How we did that? One thing we did was we had the old double pane windows, and you know, our house is 20 years, 25 years old now, and you know, the, the windows tend to, to move a little bit. So we put in interior uh, insulation windows. And that was a lot less expensive than ripping the windows out and putting in new. And what they do is they make a little metal track around the interior of the window, and then they make a plastic window out, out of a very thick, high-grade plastic, and they insert that window over the existing window. It creates a third pane with a magnetic seal like you would have on your refrigerator. I can tell you that in the windstorm last night, I heard the wind pushing on the magnets. So the wind was coming through my double-pane window and pushing on the plastic and not getting in. So it's great for insulation, it's great for noise reduction. We live about nine houses down from a train track, we never hear the train. It's not so great if you want to open the, the windows and vent the house, because it's a little cumbersome to take off. That's the one, one drawback on that. We put in a 16 seer air conditioner last year. We haven't seen the return on investment on it, but we're gonna live here a long time. We're not the people who move every three years to the house. So we went ahead and made the investment. This is gonna save us a lot of money. On, on the long term. Now, if somebody's only going to leave here a short time, probably just put in a 13 and save some money. We put in the compact fluorescents that everybody sees these days. Somebody told me, and I, I haven't verified this, that they're not going to make incandescent bulbs soon. But the uh, compact fluorescents are how we went 
They're four times more efficient. Everybody probably already knows this. They last 10 times longer. Uh, they're less expensive because they use so much less electricity. Uh, they reduce the air and water pollution because you're re replacing one bulb heats a half ton of CO2 out of the atmosphere. Okay? They're versatile because they can plug into anything that currently takes a bulb. The one drawback is they do have a little bit of mercury in them. Uh, mercury, it, it has about one-fifth the amount found in a watch battery. But it does have some mercury in it, so there's a, there's a give and take there for the environment. The newer thing that's coming out are the LED light bulbs. These are really great because they last 133 times longer than a standard light bulb. The problem is they're very expensive right now. Uh, they're very durable. You can drop them and they won't break like a light bulb does. They're much cooler. They don't produce heat in your house the way that an incandescent bulb does. Um, they use a fraction of the wattage, but they do have a high cost right now. As with any new product, as they get more of them in the market, they, the price will come down. And then the light field on an LED is straight. It doesn't, like a light bulb is circular and the light goes out in all directions. LEDs aren't like that. So they're having to put a lot of LEDs into a bulb to make it the same effect. So that's driving the cost up. This, these will come down in the future. The other thing we did was we put on a solar attic fan. This just sits on the roof, we paid to install it, and we haven't paid another dime for electricity to run it since. And it just sucks heat out of the house like a normal fan would. Um, our house, like I said, was built in 83, and we kept having cold and warm spots, and we couldn't figure out how to get the house to moderate in temperature. So we found this company at the uh, Texas um, Dallas Home and Garden Show downtown at Market Center, and they had a thermal camera. And they come out and they take pictures of your house, and we happen to, to book them on a 20 degree day. It's one of those rare days where it's freezing cold outside. And so we were able to go through, this is a picture of my living room here. This is a picture of the same angle on the, on the thermal camera. And we could see where when they built the house, there's no insulation. So we were able to find the cold spots all throughout the house and they were not in the places we suspected. We thought they'd be around the door or around the window. No, they were in the middle of the wall where when either the insulation in this air has fallen or it wasn't put in when we built. So now we know where to blow in extra insulation. These are the people who will do it and I put their number up there. If you'd like it, I can give it to you later. This is something you can talk to people about when you're buying a, a, a house that's not brand new and say, you know, if you have any problems, I know this company that can come and help you. And those are the same, same regions of the pictures. Uh, one thing we do is we also do rainwater reclamation. We have rain barrels around our house. We have several places in our, in our uh, roof line that make a V, and so water just pools right off of that. This is great in the summers when we're on water restrictions. It's not enough pressure to run, you know, a big sprinkler system, but it's enough to run a soaker hose. And you can also, we have our little water pitcher under there, and we, you know, just take the pitcher around and hand water. We store, I think that's about a 30, 30 gallon tub, and it's usually always full after a rainstorm. Uh, we're actually going to add three or four more of these. Uh, composting is a real easy thing to do. I don't do the composting, my partner does it, but uh, it gets vegetable waste and, and some, you know, like shredding. You get your junk mail, you shred it, you can use some of that paper in the composting. So your junk mail becomes composted and helps your garden. Uh, it creates usable soil, keeps it out of the landfill. And then, uh, like I said, my partner does uh, gardening. So he has 60 foot by 8 foot uh, uh, raised bed <coughs> organic garden that he grows all sorts of vegetables in. We don't eat nearly a third of them. We give them all the way to the neighbors, you know, just too much stuff coming in. So, uh, 